two remote possibilities. One is that there's some unknown chemistry, some chemistry we don't know about. The second more intriguing possibility is that there might be some kind of life form in the Venus atmosphere that is producing the phosphine that we have detected. Well, for more, Dr. Jekyll von Loon joins me. He is an astrophysicist and director of the Kiel Observatory in the UK. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, is this exciting news for an astrophysicist? And I mean, should we be excited too? Yes, <clears throat> definitely. Um, I mean, as was said, um, it, it's not 100% clear that this uh, phosphine has a biotic origin. Um, but it's difficult to explain it in any other way. And we know that um, phosphine is produced by bacteria. Uh, phosphorus, of course, it's, it's a fairly common element. It's found in fertilizers, it's nutrients. So that, that's, that's all uh, like an easy explanation. Now, you may indeed think like, well, can there ever be life on Venus? Because the, the temperatures are so hot and, and uh, the atmosphere is extremely dense. It's like being a kilometer underneath the surface of the water. However, higher up in the atmosphere, it's much more uh, pleasant, if you like. Um, the, it reaches a, a, a typical uh, pressure that we enjoy outside here um, at temperatures which are actually uh, quite mild. And you could have some liquid water and water has been detected, very small fractions, but there is water in the atmosphere at that, at that level. So it's not completely unthinkable that there are some microbes. Now, what this will tell us is that uh, life obviously would then be present on Venus. But um, we know that Venus in the past was much more like the Earth. And so fairly recently, within the last billion years or so, it has changed to what it is now. So what we could be looking at, if this is life, um, is really the remnants of life on Venus. It much have, must have been much more uh, lively, if you like, on the surface. And this is really a wake-up call. You, you've just seen the, the reports on, on the Arctic melting. No, Earth is, is heading in the direction of what Venus is not, uh, like now. Right. I mean, give us, give us a better idea of how much life microbes really do represent? Well, microbes are, of course, uh, tiny. You can't see them, but they are very numerous. So uh, among all life, um, no, they make up the majority. And it's also the simplest life. It's the life form that was first formed on the Earth. And it's also the life form uh, we, we should first expect to find it on other planets. Um, so although it's not certain that there have been any more complex life on, on Venus in the past. Um, it's, it's not totally surprising if there had been uh, microbial life on Venus and if, if there's still some of that. And as I said, if, if there is, then somewhere up in the atmosphere is the most likely place to find it. Right. So what will scientists be doing next to, to discover more about how much this life actually does exist? Yeah, well, like Sarah Sega says, I mean, there will be people trying to model how you could make phosphine in an abiotic way, of course, because if there's another explanation, then we should also, of course, look at that. Um, further analysis of the composition of um, Venus's atmosphere. Ideally, of course, we would like to go there with spacecraft and take samples from the atmosphere and, and study what's in it. Um, the microbes themselves, we can't see from Earth. Um, we can only you know, infer certain chemical processes from um, the chemical makeup of the atmosphere. So ideally, you would really get a sample from, from the atmosphere. Okay, Jacob van Loon, thank you so much for being with us from Kiel. We appreciate it.